Now we're at the 16th of July and I think I might try a little experiment. I've got a feeling that Ralph Rangnick is not going to make any signings yet because, well, there's nothing, there's nobody he can bring in which will help our squad while we play the Diamond. Whereas now that I have tried this, a new 4-3-3 with three up front, we would be a striker short. So I'm kind of hoping this activates his mind and thinks, oh, we need a striker and we'll try and get ourselves a striker. It's very similar to the diamond in some aspects, but we've got a poacher on the right-hand side now. I've made the two Mazalas on support. Uh, I've pushed the lineup higher as well, so there's not so much of a gap in between the midfield and the attack. And in possession as well, I've brought the tempo down to just higher so that we're not consistently just losing the ball. And we're also not working the ball into the box. I'm okay with us getting the, bo the ball in as much as possible now that, that we've got three players in there. So yeah, that's the game plan anyway going forward. Uh, we've got Arnold Peters who's going to be playing on the right. Uh, and Sarach, who will be playing from the left-hand side. But I still think we need another striker. Will he bring one in? Well, like I mentioned, right, we have £52 million. We have a lot of money there to do it. And we have already made an offer for a player. Kike Gonzalez. Now, I don't think this will be a first-teamer because I am not... I'm really hoping this isn't a first-teamer. I mean, it's... Acceleration and pace are not great. He has 10 for finishing. Yeah, his composure is good. His off the ball is decent. He's got great work rates, but he's not really a striker that I'd want to be going for. We look like we're going to try and sign him for around about 11 million. That's that's good for me, 12.75 million. That's good for me, but I would rather have spent 50 million on one player than bring in like three players for less than that. But there we go. We're also, we're trying to get our Eric Abadal in as a scout, which, hey, he's a very good scout in this game. If you haven't ever used him before, he's a fantastic scout. And even on this game, he was Man United's chief scout at one point. So there you go. Well, we skipped forward about a month because on the 17th of August, this one caught me by surprise, actually, because we had two bids that were rejected for Enrique Rojo. And I thought, oh, do I bring you back for that? And I thought, no, there's no point. We're so low ball in them it's ridiculous but what i didn't realize was that we actually have had a couple of transfers on the outs which then meant we could afford to pay more for this player and ralph Rannick has gone for it so enrique arojo we have signed him from wolves shock they signed a portuguese player but he is phenomenal like he has got all greens in all the right places that pace acceleration and agility and balance are fantastic good off the ball good composure good anticipation and very good dribbling finishing and first touch with a great technique too. Has the player traits that I enjoy too. If likes to beat the offside trap. I'm not a big fan of moves the ball into channels. But there we go. Plays one twos and tries first time shots. Can be good and he has good technique for that. So I think it's a fantastic signing. I mean we are spending a little bit of money. 57 million pound. But he scored 13 goals last season. 30 games. 17 in the season 4 in the Premier League. And now we'll obviously be playing with a better team. Because Wolves were around about mid table. For the last few years. I think this is a great signing. I really really do uh let me show you by the way the signings that we have left the club eduardo monterio has left for 24 million pound uh, by the way we lost rafinha out of contract left us ralph Rannick decided never to go for it or he just never accepted uh, alberto moret malario also left us as well uh, but then the reason why this deal actually caught me off guard was because lorenzo colombo left us 12 million pound to Atalanta. It's a deal that slipped completely under the radar for me. I didn't put him on the unwanted list or anything like that. We get loads of bids in every now and then and I just didn't see it happening. So there we go. A big deal leaving the club to bring in an even bigger deal. Now, what it does for our trans budget is it only gives us £12 million left, but our wage budget is slightly over. We have got some offers here of a £12.75 million up to £24 million to buy Munich a Dario Barreto. Again, it's a player that we only signed last year and not for a lot of money. 625 k and we're about to sell him on for like £24 million. Ralph Rannick's a bloody genius sometimes, let me tell you that. Great bargain picks. Uh, selling on. It's money ball football viewers. That's what I like to see. Now we're just playing our first game of the season and it was a 2 all draw against Sheffield United so a bit of a local derby. And I'm a bit disappointed with it really. However, when I really look at our team, we do have like 3 or 4 quite bad injuries and they actually have a fantastic squad too. Armando Brogia headlining their strike force and Callum hudson Adoy. Uh, smashed in a free kick there to put them 2-1 up. So we had to rescue the game quite late on, and it did come from Lorenzo Luca. Smashing the ball at the goalkeeper twice before our new, well, I say new, it's two seasons now, Sarach scored 
there in the 85th minute. Arojo did play a 6.6 though, so that was quite bad. But yeah, we had a lot of players missing due to injury, which meant players like Calvin Phillips had to play at centre-back. Uh, Calvo played, who never really plays. So in midfield and in defence, we have got some big, big injuries for this game at least. And yet, we were quite unlucky. 32 shots, 13 on target. Their goalkeepers had a great game there. Our XG of 4.02. We should have scored so many more goals, and yet we still drop points. Okay, we're going into deadline day now, and we have just made a bid, but it was rejected immediately. Ashraf El Saeed. 23 years of age, Egyptian, looks very good. I don't know whether he's been playing a lot. He's been playing for, well, he's played bit parts, I guess. He's 17 appearances, all of them off the bench. Three appearances this time, all off the bench. So no, he hasn't really been playing probably as much as what he'd like to. It is another striker, but it's one of those strikers that don't have very good finishing, but is better at passing. So why he's a natural striker when he's clearly a center attacker midfielder, I will never know. Uh, but there we go. So we've had a bid rejected for him. We still have £19 million in the budget there. And we have sold Dario Barreto for £24 million. In total, of course, a lot of that was done in installments. Now we've played another game and we've actually done really well. A 4-3 victory. And Enrique Arroyo Ojo managed to get three goals. So there we go. His first game played terrible. Second game, he bags himself a hat trick. Uh, what a way to make yourself a hero on your home debut. But before deadline day closes, today's video is sponsored by Spitch. They are the brand new fantasy football app that I have been crazy about recently. That is free to play if you're in the UK, Austria, or Germany. You do have to be 18 years of age or over because even though it is free to play, you can actually win prize money that's fantastic but the best thing about spitch in my opinion is the fact that you don't have to worry about any transfer restrictions if you've made a bad team one week then you can change every single player in that team the following week and it tells you whether they're injured they're suspended it gives you all of that information and all the statistical analysis is on the app as well so you can make the best decisions when picking your team at the top of the description you're going to see two links the top link the very top link if you click that you'll be helping supporting me as a content creator by downloading spitch for free the second link underneath you'll be helping yourself because you'll be joining my community league with 70 other people and you'll be having a lot of fun while you do it be competitive every single week be competitive whatever weeks you'd like to take charge me and dad are in there every single week we're talking about what we are doing on Spitch and whether we are beating each other. Next season is going to be a big one because we're going to start off from the very beginning but make sure you get in the league right now so you can practice and you can get the gist of Spitch before the next season starts. Thank you very much for everybody who has been joining Spitch so far and thank you very much to Spitch for sponsoring today's video. And the deadline day has passed. So that is our transfer window. Nothing else actually happened other than these deals that you can see on the screen here. We brought in a total of 74 million pound and we actually spent 70 million uh, as well. So yeah, we brought in a little bit more than what we spent, but transfer budget wise, we kind of don't look that good. But anyway, we've got a little bit left to spend. I, I presume in, in January. So maybe we'll make another deal then. But until then, we'll skip forward into January. Our Europa League group is Copenhagen, Young Boys and Rosenborg. Three difficult teams, I'd say, in Europa League. But currently we're sat in seventh place. Only two games played though. So I'll see you in January. All right then. We're back in January and we're looking quite good. Now, I don't want to get too excited because, of course, last season we were in first place when I brought you back the first week of January and it all went a little bit tits up, didn't it? Uh, but currently we're sat in second place behind kind of our rivals Manchester United 47 points we've got 44 they've got a better goal difference but of course they still have Pep Guardiola as their manager so it's no surprises there and they also have Yusuf and Makuku who they must have only signed yeah 138 million pound last season an unbelievable amount of money that they have been spending there but hey it's Manchester United they have that amount of money so we need to obviously compete against that Ralph so our goal difference isn't that bad we've only actually lost one game against Wolves which is really good we have drawn five games though including against Manchester United but some silly draws there against Palace Villa and West Ham maybe 
uh, since we last met. 13 wins in total. We can take a look at some of the results here. We're scoring a lot of goals. That's obviously thanks to our tactic. Now, if we take a look at the transfers, we aren't really making any moves as yet. Uh, there are a few players who might be leaving. Calvin Phillips, we've just given him a contract extension. He had a few offers because his contract was about to run out, but he's been a, a stonewall player for us all of these years, so I don't want to let him go just yet. Um, we still have about £20 million in the budget. Right now, our top goal scorer is Lorenzo Luca, who has 32 goals in just 25 appearances. That is insane. Enrique Arojo has 13 in 22, and Sirach only has 8 in 27 what is he doing like he's supposed to be one of our best players and he just cannot find the net and i'm really curious as to why everything points up maybe consistency that i can't see that's what everything points up but even then it doesn't show that on his reports in fact probably shows the contrary like he looks like he's quite a very well mental player because he even has a perfectionist personality we just can't get into bloody score and i have no idea why we also topped our europa league group only drawing one game against roseborg winning the other five there and scoring a hell of a lot of goals again uh, minimum of three goals in every single game 16 points 21 goal difference that's a plus 21. Okay, the 26th of January, then we've had another bid rejected from uh, Dortmund this time. Rad Milanovic, uh, centre defence midfielder, or centre midfielder, you can play centre defence mid. Not a bad player, to be honest. I wouldn't have minded bringing this guy in. 23 years of age, he's 6'3", with some fantastic physical attributes and player traits. So although his technicals don't look amazing, they're still good, and there are so many 13s and 14s there. Uh, Montenegrin as well, so it's a, a very random nation so i like that i like the unique nation but 29 million pound is their asking price and right now we have not got that we can only go up to around about 18 million and that quite frankly is never going to be enough and as we end the transfer window the deadline day has passed we've had a few offers coming in for a couple of youngsters but nothing has really happened during this january transfer window just a few little youngsters leaving for some cash money which probably is not going to amount for anything until next season. Now, we've played a fair few amount of games in January. Uh, it's been a bit of a ropey month, I guess. It started off with a 1-0 draw against Arsenal, a 3-0 victory against Bolton in the FA Cup. Then we lost to West Ham. And a very weird result, to be honest. Came right out of the blue. A 3-1 victory then against Aston Villa. And again, Henrique Rojo scores himself a hat-trick. It just seems like he does that. He goes maybe weeks without scoring a goal and then gets three in one game. Caligari even got himself sent off before any of our goals were scored, and yet we still went on one. Uh, and then a 3 all draw against Manchester United. Saved in the very last minute by Kike Gonzalez, 92nd minute. So not bad, considering as well we went 1-0 up, then 3-1 down. Uh, Lorenzo Luca get making it 3-2, and Kike Gonzalez getting the equaliser. Jude Bellingham also plays them as well as Martin Satriano. So we know how good Manchester United's team is. But if we take a look at the league then, they have pulled away a little bit more by five points now uh, because of the draws and the losses that we've had recently. They've also lost another one. Um, so we are a little bit behind, but I'd like to think that this time we can keep the top four. Even if we don't win the Europa League, which, hey, we've got to be one of the favourites being that we are a formal winner just two seasons ago. Well, here we are at the end of the season. I can thankfully say with a sigh of relief that we have finished in the top four. It is in third place. Like, we did drop down another position. Newcastle actually finishing in second there. So, this league table actually looks like very mid-90s. Manchester United, Newcastle, Leeds, Liverpool. Uh, but there we go. So, even Blackburn, West Brom, Middlesbrough going down. Oh, I'm just relieved that we've actually finished in the top four. It's the first time that we've managed to do it. Champions League football for the second time, of course, after winning Europa League last time. And Lorenzo Luca has 29 goals with the highest average rating this season. Takafesi Kubo managed to get 15 assists as well, so that is massive. And even Almeida chipped in with 10. So we've had a great season Premier League wise. We're scoring a lot of goals, although Man United have a far superior goal difference. We're obviously conceding a lot because we have still got only 40 plus 47 goal difference. Uh, I think we can definitely be happy with that. Statistically, they are the most goals. Actually, we only scored one less than them. So we've just conceded a little bit more, uh, I guess, because they had the most clean sheets as well as scoring the most goals. Yeah, we're not even on that page, nor are we on that one. So we definitely conceded quite a lot. Man United have absolutely dominated, but we had the most shots 
shots. That's because we're not working the ball into the box, which says a lot, to be honest, how well we have managed to do and how much of a change that little tactical tweak has made at the start of the season. What about other competitions, though? Oh, we're the runners-up. I thought we had done it then. We are the runners-up. A 3-2 loss to Wolves. I think the most disappointing thing about this game as well is we don't have Lorenzo Luca. I've just checked the team sheet and he is nowhere to be seen. We've had to play Takafesa Kubo up front. Uh, so that is obviously hampered our points here. But Wolves have got a great team. They've got Buendia and Shoratai. And Shoratai looks unbelievable. I remember uh, seeing him when he made his move to Wolves. And Adam lost check up front. We took the lead with an Almeida penalty. But they actually went 3-1 three, uh, three, up. Shoratire uh, there to Mosquera. So they got Kanate and Mosquera at centre-backs. They got a great team. And Takafesi Kubo into Gonzalez there at the near post to make it 3-2 really late on. We just could not do anything. Uh, we did have the better of the shots and they only had next year 0.98. But what a team that they have. What a team that they have built. Uh, to be honest, Wolves, considering obviously that they're just controlled by the AI. Uh, I've never heard of that guy. Never heard of that guy. Where is he at the start? He's a Slavia Prague manager. Fair enough. Uh, and he's only just moved there as well. They even have Ivan Tony. They've got Ivan Tony there. I'll show you Shola Shore attire. Uh, he looks absolutely unbelievable and he is contracted to Wolves. They signed him on a permanent for 13 million. Like, what a steal that is. Just goes to show how good Man United are. But I'm so annoyed with that because, I mean, they finish in 11th in the league and now they have another Champions League spot so runners up it's disappointing Lorenzo Luca did get 16 goals in this competition as well oh that's so annoying anyway goals wise 48 and 49 he did step off a little bit from the gas uh, 27 in 45 from Enrique Arrojo and only 20 with 13 assists from Sarac in 57 games it's not good enough if you ask me. Even Kike Gonzalez got 13 and he only started 10. Uh, we did get 28 assists though from Takafesi Kubo. Beltran even got 13 assists and Almeida also got 13. Our budget for next season though, £40 million and a little bit there. We're going to go another three years for a 12-year run. I hope you can join us next week. If the episode is out, I'll put it on the screen right now. Thank you very much and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.